Boston, 2019. It all begins again. Excuse me? Here, our story follows an FBI agent who goes by the name of York. But what lies at the end? Will it be truth or madness? Did you see that, Zach? Nintendo just announced a sequel to Deadly Premonition, titled Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise. Oh my, what a surprise. I guess all secrets remain hidden until they're inevitably divulged. Not only that, but Nintendo also decided to surprise release a Switch port of the original Deadly Premonition game, so that people can experience, or re-experience, the absolutely bonkers adventures of FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan on the move. Now, it's pretty safe to say that Deadly Premonition is a divisive game. Some people think it's a work of insane genius, whilst others think it's unplayable trash. One person's art is another person's shart, I guess. That's right, man. Rock and roll! Deadly Premonition is scruffy and ugly, and it certainly doesn't make the best first impression. So it's no surprise then that the subpar presentation has turned off many potential players in the past, and will probably continue to do so for the Switch re-release as well. But here's the thing. Those who have been scared away by the wonky animations, the stiff combat and the bizarre pacing are missing out on the big picture. Peel back the low-res skin of Deadly Premonition, push past that clunky prologue, and you'll find the heart of the game, which has an unforgettable personality, brought forth by the bizarre writing and the dark mystery that lies at its core. So, with all that in mind, here are 13 things we want from Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise. One of the biggest turnoffs for newcomers who are thinking about trying out Deadly Premonition for the first time is just how janky the whole experience looks. And to be fair, they're not wrong. Graphically, Deadly Premonition is a nightmare, with PS2-era graphics at best, bland, empty locations, and a frame rate that occasionally makes it look like you're playing a Victorian flipbook rather than a game that was released in 2010. Not only that, but the sound mixing is all sorts of weird too, with music that randomly ends and starts for no discernible reason, and often plays at volumes that drown out what the on-screen characters are trying to say. Mr. Francis York Moore, the purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then, your case is solved. Thankfully, the two trailers released for Deadly Premonition 2, one in English and one in Japanese, seem to show a lot of improvements in this area. As you can see from this short section taken from the Japanese trailer, the presentation is of a much higher quality here. The interior of this location especially is packed with detail, from the individually rolled doobies and the box of weed on this table, to the CD cover art on the shelves and the mountains of junk on the floor, this location looks lived in and real, especially when compared to the big boxes of smudge that count as locations in Deadly Premonition 1. That's not to say that DP2 is perfect though. This shot from the English trailer shows off a location that's much more in keeping with the first game. It's completely bare, there's only a couple of textures, and in perhaps the most deadly premonition thing of all, the in-game camera is clipping right through that ceiling light there. Then, in the Japanese trailer, we get a quick glimpse of this incredibly janky hand holding a cocktail glass. I'm pretty sure that's not how hands work, sweary. If these are the shots they chose to show in the announcement trailer, Zack, then we can be quietly confident that the other locations and characters in the final release may be just as scruffy. Uh, 
One of the biggest criticisms surrounding Deadly Premonition 1 is its clunky controls, which made combat in particular very stiff and unsatisfying. Lock onto a character's midriff, nudge the camera up a bit, hit him with a headshot, then rinse and repeat forever. Great. Once you'd got used to it, the combat was hardly the most challenging, and the motions felt more robotic than they did fluid, leading to moments of frustration and even boredom when confronted by long sections of combat. We only get a slight glimpse of DP2's combat in the Japanese trailer, which shows a similar control method as York takes on a huge beast chained to a large door. Here, the camera is once again over York's shoulder, and his movement does look a little on the slow side. What's interesting about this shot, though, is that York isn't even holding a gun here. Instead, his right arm and hand are twisted and distorted, like they've become merged with the other world. You can even see him load his hand and then point it finger gun style at the enemy, which is presumably the game's otherworldly solution to fighting otherworldly enemies. Oh yes, you've got to hand it to Sweary, Zack. He's found an excellently weird way to arm York in this sequel. For all its faults, you have to admire Deadly Premonition for its ambitious approach to its open world. The town of Greenvale, where the game is set, is a fully functioning location that you can explore at your leisure. Businesses and buildings open at certain times, and residents have specific routines which they follow, meaning you have to be at certain places at certain times in order to progress through the game. It has an almost simulation-like quality to it, so it's a shame then that exploring the town of Greenvale can get boring pretty quickly. The locations themselves are often completely empty, aside from maybe a collectible or two. Graphically, it's as dull as ditch water, which makes driving anywhere a chore, and there's almost nothing to do, aside from going to sleep or fishing, if you want to pass the time. What Deadly Premonition 2 needs, then, is a much more involved and detailed open world, one that feels busier, has more activities, and is ultimately more fun to explore than Greenvale was. Don't you agree, Zack? While details are thin in this respect, we do know that Deadly Premonition 2 is set in New Orleans, and the Japanese trailer does give us a few hints as to how its open world sections will operate. For a start, there seems to be more varied locations this time around. There's this trailer park, this lush green cornfield, and this large town. Graphically, this new location looks a lot better than Greenvale, but I can still spot a lot of jank in there. The NPCs that populate the town, for instance, are copy and paste drab entities that may as well be mannequins with the amount of animations on show. And to be honest, in this shot, the town itself looks to be just as lifeless as Greenvale. In terms of extracurricular activities, there doesn't seem to be much hinted at here, except for this quick shot of an airboat shooting range from the Japanese trailer that looks like it has some proper rubbish aiming controls. There's another shot of the airboat in the English trailer that suggests perhaps some kind of time trial challenges or races, but apart from that, it's anyone's guess what the other activities and minigames may be. One of Deadly Premonition's biggest problems is just how boring and time-consuming getting around Greenvale can be, especially before you unlock fast travel. The two vehicles on offer to Morgan are slow and sluggish, to say the least. They control like crap, and to say that navigating your way around the town using the endgame map is confusing is a massive understatement. The Japanese trailer hints at a few new ways to get around New Orleans in the sequel, though. There's the aforementioned airboat, although that may be confined to certain linear portions of the game. And then there's this shot of York using a skateboard to roll his way through the town centre. That'll definitely speed things up a little when it comes to walking to places, but as to how many other vehicles we'll be able to drive and how they'll handle, well, that's an unknown quantity at this point. What Deadly Premonition 2 needs desperately, though, is some kind of waypoint system, or on-screen markers to make navigation a bit easier. In the original game, whenever you get into a vehicle, an on-screen map pops up, which helps you get your bearings slightly, 
but there's no sign of one in the DP2 trailers at all. There is, however, a new compass on the HUD here, which seems to show the direction and distance of important locations in the game world. But will this be enough to make navigation less of a burden, Zack? I'm not so sure. The town of Greenvale wasn't the only thing that showed slight elements of simulation in Deadly Premonition. York himself was also affected by the passing of time in a variety of ways. When he gets hungry, you need to feed him, and when he gets tired, you either need to bang some coffee into his mouth or find a place for him to have a little kip for a bit. Not only that, but as the game progresses, York's beard will slowly grow, and in order to avoid penalties, you'll have to make sure he regularly shaves. His suits will also get dirty over time, and if you don't get him a change of clothes every so often, flies will start buzzing around him and York will be fined for being a stinky agent. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. While these survival mechanics add a bit extra to the game, they're rather basic to say the least, so it would be nice if Deadly Premonition 2 could expand on these ideas and make them a little bit more interesting than just pressing a button once in a while. How about some Breath of the Wild style cooking, perhaps? I mean, making your own sinner sandwich after gathering all the ingredients would be pretty cool, I reckon? Hmm? Oh, I can't believe it. This is fantastic. It's really good. Olivia, I'm sorry, but can I change my order? I'll have what Harry's had. Hey Zach, you know what I love the most about Deadly Premonition? It's the way the game constantly breaks the fourth wall. It's just really good. Yup, if you've never played Deadly Premonition before, then you won't know that the role of Zack, the character that York keeps having conversations with, is actually played by you, the player. Occasionally you'll have to press buttons to show that you're listening, or answer questions to show that you've been paying attention to the game, and York will often raise his fingers to his ear and address Zack, or us as the audience, in order to explain his methods. Okay, Zack, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zack. In one very brief clip in the English version of the DP2 trailer, we do see York talking to Zack, so we know that the fourth wall breaking will be in there. But so far it's unclear if it will be more or less prominent than in the original game. Considering there's a new protagonist in DP2, FBI agent Aaliyah Davis, it could mean that some of the weird elements of the game, like the fourth wall breaking, are given a back seat when you're playing through her sections. Which would be a shame, as I'd love to hear York tell us all about what kind of films he's been watching. Speaking of Deadly's movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83. Directed by Douglas McCann. Did you see that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F you. In the coffee. The thing I love about Deadly Premonition the most is just how bonkers it all is. From the shouted conversations with Polly across a long table, to the messages written in the coffee, and Mr. Stewart's bizarre sandwiches. Everything in the game has this slightly twisted, and at times disturbing aura to it, which helps to make the story and its characters so compelling. You don't see much in the way of weirdness in the trailers for Deadly Premonition 2 though. An aged ancient Francis Morgan is there with his telltale facial scars doing a joint, so that should be pretty odd, but Aaliyah and her partner look very much like business as usual. So here's hoping for a colourful cast of characters and a series of events that are just as surreal as those from the original game. Hey, mister, my pot is getting cold. You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? 
No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My part is getting colder. It's not just the characters and the situations that are batshit crazy and deadly premonition, though. Can you guess what else is, Zack? No? Why, the detective work, of course. From the strange, unexpected puzzles you need to solve to the collecting of clues and the profiling of cases, detective work in Deadly Premonition forms the backbone of the gameplay as you attempt to unravel the dark mystery. The trouble is, though, the detective work could do with a little more, well, work, I guess? <laughs> Often investigating a crime scene will just involve wandering around until you've found all the glowing areas in a set location, which can feel a little bit like you're being led along by a leash. While the puzzles can normally be solved by a little bit of trial and error. Deadly Premonition 2 could really do with some deeper detective mechanics. Maybe something like you see in Batman Arkham City's Deadshot side missions, or the way you can track crime scenes in The Witcher 3. Basically, DP2 needs something that will make you feel more like you're investigating the scene of a crime, and less like you're on a macabre easter egg hunt. Deadly Premonition is full of insta-kill quicktime events, and they're rather aggravating to say the least. Some of them can be quite cool and original, like the part where you have to hide in a locker from the raincoat killer and then can watch the events unfold from a picture-in-picture -picture perspective, but a large number of them are standard quicktime shenanigans where a missed timed button press will result in an instant mission failure. <laughs> If quicktime events are going to factor in Deadly Premonition 2, and at the moment there's no clue either way, I hope to god they're a bit fairer this time around. In certain points in DP1, you'll need the reflexes of a cat in order to hit the correct button in time, and a couple of these moments almost caused me to give up on playing the game altogether. The weird thing about Deadly Premonition's enemies, the mysterious shadows, is that they look so crappy, but also that they're genuinely rather creepy. The way they bend over backwards and then dart towards you is genuinely panic inducing, and the way they moan in their distorted voices when they die is deeply unsettling. <laughs> The aforementioned door beast from the other world is the only confirmed enemy we've seen in the Deadly Premonition 2 trailers, but it would be great to see a return of the shadows, albeit with more varied forms this time around. Do you have any idea if the shadows will return, Zack? Hmm. Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries, right Zack? I think it's accurate to say that a lot of the facial animations in Deadly Premonition 1 look a lot like they've been animated in Gary's mod. Mm. It's pretty unsettling most of the time, but nothing turns my stomach more than the facial expressions of the creepy Ingram twins with their dead-eyed stares and their weird, open-mouthed, toothy grins. <laughs> Get them away from me. While the Deadly Premonition 2 trailer heavily suggests the presence of a child in the game, especially in the York sections where it looks like she's his partner on the case, this youngster looks nowhere near as haunting as the kids in DP1, so let's hope it stays that way. Without a doubt, one of the most memorable things about Deadly Premonition is its soundtrack. From the unmistakable guitar plucking and the chirpy la-la-las of the title screen music, through to that infamous whistling theme which always seems to come in at the most inappropriate of times, the soundtrack of Deadly Premonition is just as weird as the game it accompanies. 
neither the Japanese nor English trailers for DP2 give away much about the soundtrack, opting instead for generic, spooky and tense sound beds only, and these do nothing to convey or complement the potential weirdness of the game. So here's hoping that Deadly Premonition 2 comes with a deadly soundtrack, just like its predecessor, because without it, a lot of Deadly Premonition's personality will be lost. And we don't want that, do we, Zach? <laughs> And finally, after listing a bunch of things that I want the sequel to improve upon, I'm going to do a quick U-turn and say that I do hope that the game doesn't end up being too polished. Part of the charm of Deadly Premonition, of course, was its jankiness and its crappiness, and if it loses that, it might remove a lot of its personality. As a fitting example, let's talk about the movie The Room, released in 2009 and directed by and starring Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. The Room was a commercial failure, but it went on to gain cult status and a huge fan base as a movie that's so bad it's good. But would a sequel to The Room be just as loved by the audience if Tommy Wiseau had learned how to competently write, direct and act in it? I just don't think that would be the case. I think maybe it would end up being a boring, average movie and Perhaps that would be the same for Deadly Premonition 2. Hmm, food for thought, eh, Zach? You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Yes, Zach, you're correct. We have reached the end of this video. So, if you enjoyed it, do give it a like, do subscribe for daily videos from Eurogamer, and think about clicking that bell icon to be notified whenever we push one of them live. Now, why not click one of these other videos that are on screen now while I sit back and enjoy this delicious cup of coffee. Oh my, that is a magnificent blend, Zach. And I should know, I'm quite particular about my coffee.